Please be seated. Good morning. Good morning. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Happy Mother's Day. Beautiful sunny day out there. Welcome to this beautiful day our Heavenly Father has made for us to come together as a congregation, praise, prayer, worship, song, and celebration. The announcements as are in the bulletin are there announcements and concerns from the congregation at this time. Pastor. Thank you, Brother David. We have a number of prayer requests. We continue to pray for Myron Campbell and Rhonda. Myron had a, uh, a seizure, but is plan they're planning on getting him back into altar care. Uh, any other prayer requests? It's also a prayer request for Tamara and Al Werner. Tamara is the daughter of, da of Dan and Gail Weber Clady from New Washington. I'm sorry, John Sturtz. John Sturtz. You know, we've been praying for him for quite some time. It's a, he must really be some tough cookie. Yeah. I don't mean to degrade or denigrate. But you know, I would put Alice up against him any time. I mean, Alice, any other prayer requests? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we pray for Tamara and Al Werner and, and ask that you be with him in a way that will allow not only us, but for him to see or them to see how important they are in your life, in your, in your world, and your wishes for us. Heavenly Father, we also pray for John Sturtz with all the difficulties he's had. Be with uh, John. Help him to be strong during this time when he, so many things are going in the wrong direction. And we ask that you continue to bless him and his family. Thank you, Lord, for all the ways in which you have provided for us and protected us. And we ask that you continue to do so because as much as we try, we just can't live life without you. Thank you for being here with us and knowing and letting us know that you will never forget, forget us or abandon us. Help us to abide in you, in your name. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth.
The Lord be with you. Let us pray. The prayer is found in the insert to the bulletin for the sixth Sunday of Easter. O God, all good things can come from you alone. Generously consider then our humble prayers. Inspire us to consider what is true and direct us to accomplish what is right. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, he lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. Before we actually start the reading, Laura, this is Mother's Day. And you're a mother, right? It's good. So one, one th I was hoping that would be right. Uh, I need help from Carter, Colton, Kylie. Yeah, you come up too. Good. Happy Mother's Day to you. Happy Mother's Day to you. Happy Mother's Day, dear mothers. Happy Mother's Day to you. Now, would you take some of these flowers and give them to the mothers in the congregation? And if there's a man there who really feels shyed that he didn't get one, you can give him one too. It's a little wet down there, but we're used to that from outside, right? Okay. Are there other moms? The ones that uh, we can't give away to here will be given away at Bob Evans to the mothers who are there. So if you want to have a flower, another flower, you can either come in here and beg or you can <laughs> go to Bob Evans. Kira's probably would like a flower. She's a future mother. Would you like a flower? <laughs> Any more? Okay. Does everybody have a flower now? John, do you want a flower? No? Okay. Thank you. Okay, thank you for all the people who helped. Again, Mother's Day. The first reading is from Acts chapter 10 verses 34 through 48. Peter opened his mouth and said, 
Truly, I understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. As for the word that he sent to Israel, preaching good news of peace through Jesus Christ, he is Lord of all. You yourselves know what happened throughout all Judea, beginning from Galilee after the baptism that John proclaimed, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. He went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. And we are witnesses of all that he did, both in the country of the Jews and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree, but God raised him on the third day and made him to appear not to all the people, but to us who had been chosen by God as witnesses, who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. And he commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one appointed by God to be judge of the living and the dead. To him all the prophets bear witness that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. While Peter was still saying these things, the Holy Spirit fell on all who heard the word. And the believers from among the circumcised who had come with Peter were amazed because the gift of the Holy Spirit was poured out even on the Gentiles. For they were hearing them speaking in tongues and extolling God. Then Peter declared, Can anyone withhold water from baptizing these people who have received the Holy Spirit just as we have? And he commanded them to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Then they asked him to remain for some days. We will now read Psalm 98 responsively. Sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous things. The Lord has made known his victory, his righteousness he has openly shown in the sight of the nations. Shout with joy to the Lord, all you lands. Lift up your voices, rejoice, and sing. Sing to the Lord with the heart, with the heart and the voice With trumpets and the sound of the horn, shout with joy before the King, the Lord. Let the rivers clap their hands, and let the hills ring out with joy before the Lord when he comes to judge the earth. The second reading is from 1 John chapter 5, verses 1 through 8. Everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ has been born of God, and everyone who loves the Father loves whoever has been born of him. By this we know that we love the children of God, when we love God and obey his commandments. For this is the love of God, that we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not burdensome. For everyone who has been born of God overcomes the world, and this is the victory that has overcome the world, our faith. Who is it that overcomes the world except the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God? This is he who came by water and blood, Jesus Christ, not by the water only, but by the water and the blood. And the Spirit is the one who testifies, because the Spirit is the truth. For there are three that testify, the Spirit and the water and the blood, and these three agree. Here ends the reading. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 15th chapter, verses 9 through 17. Jesus said, as the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. These things I have spoken to you, that my joy may be in you, and that your joy may be full. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, that someone lay down his life for his friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. No longer do I call you servants, for the servant does not know what his master is doing. But I have called you friends, for all I have heard from my Father I have made known to you. You did not choose me, 
But I chose you and appointed you that you should go and bear fruit and that your fruit should abide so that whatever you ask of the Father in my name, he may give it to you. These things I command you, so that you love, will love one another. The Gospel of the Lord. We're going to now sing the first two hymns of hymn 385. Please be seated. Last week I made an announcement that we were starting a class for preaching and teaching. And anyone who is interested in learning more about the, how these two fit together and how different they are from one another, uh, please let me know. There have been, there's been several people who have signed up and uh, we'd love to have you come and, and participate and bring your wisdom to the uh, classes that we're going to be uh, conducting at that time. Again, it will be on pre what's preaching, what's teaching, what's the difference between the two, uh, and what are some of the skills that you will be able to use uh, during various Lenten services and other services where you are invited, and I've invited in the past, many, some of you, to come and preach, and you know how much you've appreciated the, uh, those uh, times when you have shared your competency and your joy. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, there is no way that we can thank you enough for your word. You've given us the time together as a congregation to worship you and glorify you, and to receive your word so that we may glorify and serve others. Help us now to recognize who you are in our lives. In your name we pray. Amen. I have an article on, that appeared in the Atlantic Monthly, and it's an interesting article. It struck me as being interesting because in some ways it helps us to catch a hold of uh, what I'm trying to say and what this text is trying to say to us. And what is, has happened is that there are many people, or philosophers, social workers, psychologists, and others, who have come to the conclusion that uh, we in the United States especially, but also true for other countries, that we in the United States have actually sort of, uh, how, how should I put it, we have turned everyday caring into a professional's job. We have turned intimate caring and the caring that all of us at one time or another will need into the living word that is given to us by the people, professionals, rather than by the people. 
Let me tell, tell you how I come to, or how this author came to this particular conclusion. He said about 50 years ago, and these dates are not exactly, but about 50 years ago, there was a time when there were 2,500 psychologists in this country. 2,500 psychologists. 10 years ago, or today, more closely today, there are 77,000 psychologists. And when it comes to social workers, there are 30,000 back 50 years ago. But you know how many there are today, just social workers? 192,000. And if you put that together with the information that in social workers uh, are in clinical psychologists are not only doing caring work, but other kind of work, you will find that there are 77,000 more psychologists in this country. And we can go on because marriage counseling, you know how many marriage counselors there were 50 years ago? 500. 500. We must, all the people who are 50 years ago, married 50 years ago, you can stand up and leave now because you no longer need any, any advice from a marriage counselor. You know how many people are, how many marriage counselors there are today? 50,000. And we can go on and on like that. And what the author is trying to point out for us is that in a very real sense, the caring that used to be provided within a family circle, and that in many cases in our congregation still is, that that caring is now being taken over by people who are getting paid for it, by those people who probably have no reason to care other than the fact that they have a, a pocket full of money or need a pocket full of money. Now, I'm not suggesting that the psychologists and the nurses and the caring people in our world are wrong. All I'm saying is that we have submitted what is so vital to us to love one another to professionals. And we have sort of pushed aside all the joy that can be provided for one another. So that will give, you a, give us a little clue as to what's happening in our country. And it's actually getting worse and worse. Sure, I'm not telling you if you are having some kind of psychiatric or psychological issue that you should uh, go it alone, no. Psychologists and clinical psychologists and psychiatrists, marriage counselors, they all have their place. But so do we as the people of God. And that's what Jesus is pointing out for us in this particular text. He is saying to his disciples, look, we've got to start with the Father. We have to start with the Father because the Father is the one. This vertical relationship between us and God is the key relationship that we need to internalize in order for us to do what? To live a fruitful and joyful life. You see it in the text that was become, came up again and again and again. For example, we discover that uh, in the ninth, ninth verse, where it says, as the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Abide in my love. So that's the first statement here about abide. Last Sunday I got stuck up on abide. There are at least 12 references to the word abide. So if you want to get stuck on a word abide, be, to, be at it. Uh, not to be at it, but be at it. Okay. So. The first thing that we recognize is that we ought to start with the Father. We need to start with that relationship that comes from down, from upstairs. We need to, in so many words, we need to make sure that our relationship is truly anchored in God our Father. And when we do that, then we begin to recognize, as Jesus said, that God the Father loves the Son. He loves the Son. And the Son loves you and me. The Son loves you and me. You've heard my story about Hitler. And I'll tell it some other time when I have your interest more sort of pricked. Uh, but you know, you and I can rest assured. We can be certain that Christ will not leave us and that he himself would be there for us to abide in him. 
So it comes from the Father. And then it go, from the Father, it goes to the Son. And from the Son, it goes to the disciples. And from the disciples, it goes to the other disciples, to one another. That's the pattern in Scripture. Again and again and again, we find this pattern where God himself makes himself available through whom? Through Jesus or through the Holy Spirit or through someone who is, is in a very real sense, one who abides in God. So here we are. We have more and more psychiatric and psychological care provided by different people other than the ones who are in our congregations, in our household. And we have the assurance. And that's what's so wonderful about this. It says, these things I have spoken to you that what? that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be full. You see, the things that Christ has shared with them and what God himself is doing from on high is what you and I need so much because we are so often joyless. We're so often walking around without any kind of recognition that the joy that we are missing can only come from one source, and that is God himself through Jesus Christ and through the Holy Spirit. And we need to remember that. But it isn't just joy. It's also fruit. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you that you should go and be fruitful and bear that your fruit should be abide so that whatever you ask the Father in my name, he may give to you these things I command you so that you will love one another. You see, the ultimate purpose for Jesus to point out to us that we are indeed able to rely on him, the ultimate purpose is for us to recognize that he's doing that so that we can love one another, so that we can be there for one another. And you know how difficult that can sometimes be. Family members can really drain us, and we do need assistance, and we do need help from one another. You can't imagine how wonderful it is when someone like Bev comes up to you and tells you that uh, she thinks you're okay. Now, I was trying to get a little more like, just okay? No. From Bev, that's enough. And all of us, all of us can rest assured that God, God is intervening for us because he wants us to love one another. Amen. Please be seated. Turn with me to page 64. The Apostolic Creed. The grace of... 64, I'm sorry. 
I'm sorry? Apostles. It's Creed, yes. The Apostles' Creed, that's page 65. Okay. I thought it said 64 here. Okay. Would you like to go try that again so that everybody gets the same opportunity? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Now please be seated. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Holy God, we give you thanks for all the women in our lives who have nurtured, raised, and instilled us in a deep, abiding faith in you. Give all mothers the patience and grace to care for their families, trusting in you for guidance. We pray for all who have nurtured and mentored children in your ways. Lord, in your mercy. God of all good gifts, we praise your name and thank you for the good gifts you give us each day. In this Easter season, we especially thank you for the gift of eternal life through Jesus Christ. May we live each and every day focused on your love for us. In times of trial, help us see your loving kindness, trusting that you who began a good work in us will be faithful to complete it. Lord, in your mercy. Holy God, guide and protect us our protect our military service personnel as they serve our county, country and keep us free from tyranny. Keep them from harm and bring them safely home when their mission has been completed. Watch over their families while they are away from home. Lord, in your mercy. 
Loving you, Lord, you are the source of all peace and healing for our lives. Grant us peace no matter our circumstances. Grant your healing power whether we are ill in body, mind, or spirit. We have lifted to you a name in our hearts all those you have blessed with your healing spirit. Lord, in your mercy. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift his countenance upon you and give you his peace. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. She had Go in peace, serve the Lord. <laughs>